Hello everybody, this is Dan Brown with danbrowncgi.com and today we're building part 2 of building Jasper Space Station. As you can see, I started to do the UV passes, uh, unwrapping it. I cut the model in half so that I could save uh, texel density. Here I like to use the stretch area and angle function. Basically what you're trying to do is get all the polys to be colored the same shade of blue. Uh, or whatever color. This is to maximize, it's a great tool in Blender that helps me maximize um, texel density so that everything, the textures all look a similar uh, pixeliness. It's texels is what they're called. Anyway, so we have, I wasn't finished quite yet before I started the uh, recording. I had the railing still to, um, to do. As you can see, I decided to change the uh, to cut the pillars in half so that I could make sure that when I move this over to Substance Painter, everything would look similar. I like to use um, the uh, to use usually I like to use sharp, uh, Smart UV Unwrap function in Blender simply because it saves time. But sometimes, especially in long contiguous uh, uh, geometry. Sometimes that doesn't work, and so you have to do seams and cut things to get it to look uh, much better. Thankfully, nowadays with um, with some of the software, especially uh, what I use, Substance Painter, for my uh, uh, texturing, it's much better. It uh, works amazing. As you can see, I have a little bit of different colors here for the texel density. Uh, there's some area stretching going on, and so I keep. I keep fig fid fiddling, fiddling with it, I guess, <laughs> until it looks just about right. Um, the the issue is that I'm not really a good texturer or a UV unwrapper. I try to just do as good as I, a job as I can, and uh, that's what I do. Now I'm assigning everything a uh, material so that it looks so so that they're all separated by four materials as what i decided and then i joined them all together in one big chunk of geometry and then cut it in half again and i exported it to object format triangulated it and then in substance painter imported it uh, and here we are in substance painter now as usual i bake all the textures to 4096 except for the railings which i did half the size because the railings weren't quite as big and so didn't need that big of a, to save a image, uh, image memory. Uh, I always remember to try to save because unfortunately uh, Substance Painter can crash. And so this is basically me just playing around in Substance Painter from now on. Uh, and then in Blender, back in Blender later, um, uh, testing out the materials that I, the textures I had made. I ended up changing the texture color, uh, adding a few details here and there uh, colored differently so it turned out to be a white and red motif um, like the rebels from Star Wars um, but in this case I just I stuck with the original Jasper motif a very dark with blue overlighting uh, it's kind of a lengthy process here this is sped up again four times speed so it, I, it took about an hour um, to texture this thing um, to, to test all the textures. I like these materials because it gives like an edge grittiness to it, like damage to the sides, and it really adds a, a beautiful um, quality, like a used, beat up quality to the model. Now as you can see, those light geometries that I had made, that I talked about in the previous video, are still dark. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, for those of you who already know how to use a Substance Painter, that's, that's pretty simple. So back in pillars now. I started with a glossy blue uniform plastic, and then I had to remember how to do this because it's been a little while, uh, but there we go. Uh, you just cut it out using a uh, uh, a mask, uh, and if you pause it, you might be able to see it. It's kind of fast. I apologize for that. Saving, saving, saving. Then we had an emissive, and this is where I had trouble. I had to remember, uh, how do I do this? How do I do this? And I remember I wasn't in the mask anymore, so I ended up... I like Substance Painter because it has all these options that I still have no idea what most of them do. Um, but there's some really cool stuff you can you can do. And then I remembered, you go into regular. Yes. 
missive mission. So here we are. I was, test, I was just playing around, seeing what uh, Substance Painter can do. Uh, it was pretty cool. Uh, I'm trying to see what the glow effect would be. I ended up changing this glow effect because it ended up being too blue in Blender. And here's the thing about it looks great in Substance Painter, but it might not look good in Blender. So you have to go back and forth and uh, try your best to make it work. Um, and sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> and you have to go back and and redo it as best as you can. Here I'm just again playing with ideas. I was thinking about adding some grit to the light fixtures, um, but it ended up not being quite what I wanted. I ended up being just, I ended up adding a, on top of it, a texture later. Uh, I didn't record that part, but this is just me uh, testing. And this is my workflow. Uh, it's basically sampling different materials, different color design, and seeing what works and what doesn't. Usually you just have to get in there and get your hands dirty and, and do it. Uh, I usually just try my best to see what looks good, what doesn't, um, what works, what doesn't, and I usually just have to do it. So that's what I, that's what I do there. Probably not the most time uh, effect, efficient uh, <laughs> use of time, uh, but it, it certainly is very fun and, and it's, it's a creative process. Uh, you just, because sometimes what you don't think, what you think would look awesome, turns out it doesn't look what you thought or even it looks even terrible. And sometimes the things you assume would look dreadful end up looking so cool. And it's became, it can be painful. Here I am again using the mask feature to add different material uh, settings to the same, or different texture settings to the same material. So this is the same material, but I'm changing it up. And so in Blender, when I come back, there'll be a new texture set uh, that this will export which you'll see the process in a minute too. Actually a little longer than that, but uh, yeah. So as you can see, it looks really cool. Uh, this kind of beat up, kind of rough look. Uh, it's just very, very sci-fi-y kind of, you know, used future kind of look that Star Wars made uh, so successful. Um, and movies like Alien and stuff like that too. That, Really cool. I wasn't entirely thrilled with this floor. Um, I may end up redoing the floor. I, I don't know. I'm not very thrilled with it, to be honest. It's... Yeah. <laughs> it's one of those things. Now here we were having a problem, because the floor... Uh, the um, I wanted a different color here, and I didn't know how to do this at first. I had to learn, um, and the beauty of this software is it's pretty intuitive uh, once you get a head of steam going. Uh, so I realized if I could brush it out, it might work, uh, which I end up doing in a minute. But as you can see, it, I ended up redoing a lot of work. I spent about 10-15 minutes playing with this, and it was very frustrating um, to get to <laughs> to get to look right. And um, so again, I ended up going back and. Redoing this uh, geometry again, and then cutting the brushing this out so uh, so that it looks great uh, and just uniform. Um, so underneath the the railing geometry is a soft line between the two, and some mask line. You're basically masking two materials on the same geometry is pretty good. Again, this is pretty much just. Trial and error, figuring out what I like and what I don't like. I ended up changing all these colors, and I probably will change them again until I'm happy with the results. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I probably will never be happy with the results. The floor... Uh, I thought I crashed there. The floor... Uh, I wanted it to be metallic and shiny. Uh, and... So I tried this. This material did not work. I ended up exporting it into Blender and it looked awful. Um, it had lines in inappropriate places. It was just terrible. And so I ended up discarding that for another texture. Um, and so there are limitations to this approach. 
that I've that I've learned. However, I, being somebody who doesn't do materials very well and textures very well, I mean, I can do materials and cycles, but texturing never was my strong suit. I I, I always struggled. This kind of program makes um, it much easier, much better to uh, to work with, um, much more effective. Again, just trial and error. Oops, Ooh, it's, it's, it's gonna, yeah. So now I export it to the work folder, making a name for textures, atrium, outer walls. And again, I export all of them at document size 4096 and 2048 for the railings. And then inside Blender again, we start loading in the textures. Now, at this point, I just used the, uh, the diffuse maps that had been exported. As you can see in that quick shot, um, they, yeah, this, it's a lot of maps it exports, all for different, uh, layers, such as emission, roughness, metallic, uh, it's for physically based rendering, uh, PBR, and there is, I do have, Blender does have a PBR, uh, node that somebody made for cycles, but there is a, there is an issue with it, it it's not exactly... Uh, compatible <laughs> with uh, Substance Painter. As you can see, the floor texture has a line down the middle, uh, which I hadn't anticipated, and it was really bad. Now, here I am just starting the lighting uh, pass to see what I can get. I want to show off the texture, but at the same time, keep the original, keep close to the original Jaspera setup where it was very dim, softly lit, dim with uh, blue uh, lighting coming down from coming down the middle of the atrium. Um, here I decided that I had to I had to uh, augment the ge geometric lighting because it was just not working. So did a little math and figured out what to rotate and added area lamps um, called them pillar lights. I like to keep I try to keep names simple. It doesn't always work, uh, but try to name things, I try to. And then I test it again, ramp up the lights so that they illuminate a little more, cut out everything just to see what the illumination does. I'm trying, again, because I wanted it to be dimly lit, it was always described in everything I wrote and stuff as, as, as dimly soft lit lighting, uh, but it really didn't work. I find that Cycles has issues with soft lighting. Uh, there's a lot of um, I saw, uh, dark rooms and stuff, especially interiors, have a lot of fireflies. They do not, it doesn't work as well as Blender Internal did. But I'm really stuck on uh, Cycles now and really can't give it up. Here I am now, again, we're still in the the, the lighting phase. This is probably one of the lengthiest phases of a project is figuring out what looks good. So you built the geometry, now you want to show it off, but at the same time have a scene that looks cool. Uh, so here you can see that the blue lighting was too blue. And I ended, this is when I decided that I was going to change the textures and re-export them, which is pretty easy if you save the scene in a substance painter and make everything work. But um, up until this point, I just wanted to focus on getting it looking as good as possible. I like using passes uh, and adding the ambient occlusion pass so that it highlights some of the lines and, and that sort of thing. And then I use the emit pass uh, to add glows um, so that only the emissions, uh, the emissive, uh, uh, material faces are highlighted by the um, the glows. The glows pick up only that. I did not like the color. It was too colored. I decided in, that I was going to try it in Blender first. There we go. 
RBG, RGB to be to, to black and white. So hopefully that worked. And again, it's just playing with nodes. This is, it's not very entertaining to watch, I, I know. Uh, <laughs> but this is, people ask what my workflow was and this is what it is. It's just, it's just figuring out um, what looks good and what doesn't. There are more failures than successes. Uh, I, I choose not to like certain things and other things I love, but then discard anyway because it doesn't fit with the original uh, direction that I wanted to go in. And there's a lot of stuff in the dustbin that looks great by itself, but wasn't what I wanted. Now this is too dark and grainy, and I had a lot of issues with it, but it does look as close to Jaspera, the original, that, it, that I wanted. And I tried to do the overhead light down the middle of the atrium. There's a, there's a skylight um, that I'm going to build later uh, in the center at the top of the space station, and the sunlight goes down through it so that it lights from above. It's not exactly physically accurate because that wouldn't really work that way, but it's a nice idea. And I wanted to just, you know, fudge the physics a little and make that a bluish kind of haze. Kind of shafty light coming down. Um, uh, I guess they're, they're they, they have a scientific name I can't remember or co can't pronounce. Uh, they're, some people call them god rays or other things like that. Uh, they just shine shine like light through a dusty room or down through clouds or something on a city or something. And so I wanted that for the center of Jaspera. But I don't think that Cycle's uh, volumetric rendering is very efficient currently and I try to avoid it because it's so slow and it's it needs to be optimized but then again it, it never was even in blender render I noticed it was it, the computer bogs down so slow so now we're trying to optimize the render all the time trying to see to reduce graininess and fireflies but at the same time keep a balance between that and render times because as you can see um, we're up to two minutes already in the render uh, up at the corner you can see and it still has two minutes and 30 seconds and the render I'm always trying to think well you know can I tolerate this if I was doing an animation or in this thing and and that's what it ended up being, I added a mist pass, a mist pass, and to add that, I later changed these colors to make it a little better, but that's, that's the preliminary result of the texture pass of the atrium outer walls. Thank you for putting up with me, I uh, hope everybody's doing awesome, and uh, have a great day.